Living History, World War II stories as told by those who were there. And today we have the honor and the privilege of hearing the story of a P-47 pilot in World War II. Captain Dick Parker was a P-47 pilot flying over 100 low-level ground support missions in Europe during World War II. Right after D-Day and we moved into France and we were still flying out of England, we would be assigned to maybe a ground uh, company or division or something and we would fly over and uh, call them up on the radio and ask them if they need any help and they might say well there's a machine gun at this road intersection or there's a tanks over in that wood or there's something like that and then we would drop our bombs and strafe them and shoot them up then we would uh, be assigned to a or go out beyond the Trump in the German lines, oh, like say from Indio to Palmdale to San Bernardino, an area, and we just fly around that area looking for uh, targets of opportunity, we called it. Well, the P-47 had eight 50 caliber machine guns, four in each wing. I had located a convoy of Germans uh, winding up a big canyon and up over this hill. And as I was spraying this, uh, these convoy trucks and stuff and tanks going up the hill, the whole side of the hill lit up and I took a 20 millimeter shell right in my main incoming and outgoing oil line to the engine. And uh, with a thump and I called back and said I'd been hit. and. Uh, I dove right down on the deck and knew I had about three minutes to get back on our side of the lines uh, before the engine froze up because I lost all my oil right away. And what I thought was a big snow-covered flat field, it was hilly. I mean, because it's white, I couldn't yeah. see the terrain. And all I had time to do then, I was only doing about 90 miles an hour, and I pushed the nose down and skidded down the side of this hill, through a little creek, up the other side of a hole, and down into another little ravine, and the airplane came to a stop. And, of course, I jumped out right away and ran a little bit, just in case it might catch on fire. Of course, I didn't know it, but they had all of their artillery pieces so well camouflaged that I lit right in the middle of them. <laughs> and uh, he kind of gave me hell for that, but I didn't see him. Of course, you can't help that. But then he gave me a Jeep and a driver and sent me to, uh, took me to Nancy, which was uh, 19th TAC headquarters. And they'd get me from uh, TAC headquarters back to St. Dizier, where I was stationed at the time. And on the way back, he pulls up to this trailer and he said, General Patton wants to see you. And I says, oh, by the way, I was still a, a second lieutenant. And I says, oh, geez, I'm going to catch hell now, you know, for landing in the middle of his artillery. Uh, he opened the door to his trailer and I'll never forget he had on those shiny boots and his steel helmet and his pearl-handled uh, 45 and asked me to come in, which I did, uh, shaking all over. And, he really thanked us for what we were doing. He appreciated all the work that the fighter pilots were doing, and he wanted to know what I had seen and where these troops were and the columns and all of that. And I must have visited with him, oh, I suppose for about 10 minutes. It seemed like an eternity. And then he let me go and sent me on back to Nancy. Well, I lost seven airplanes. Uh, I, I'm only guessing a little bit, but of my 101 missions, I think I probably was hit maybe half of the time. I mean, you just get bullet holes or something like that. Uh, uh, I, on the other hand, I would say uh, I was hit pretty hard seven times and uh, lost seven airplanes in the war, all by all the ground fire. But you walked away from them or parachuted out? I never jumped. I you crashed didn't. them all. And I had to fly that airplane at 250 miles an hour because I only had one stabilizer to hold the nose up. And I foolishly uh, tried to land it on our 3,500 foot strip runway at 250 miles an hour. And uh, I went off the end and cartwheeled it and busted it all up and crawled out from underneath it. 
Uh, my Purple Heart mission uh, is kind of another, you know, I guess that a lot of us kind of make uh, jokes or funs out of this thing as long as you don't get killed. But uh, when I came home, people would say, well, how'd you get your Purple Heart? And I says, oh, I got hit by a boxcar that I was leading 16 ships that day. And uh, we were into Germany and strafing and finding targets. And I was the first one in. And when I was at about, oh, maybe 80 feet of altitude and uh, about 50 yards short of the train, I opened up. The whole thing blew up. And I flew through the explosion that went up as high as 2,000 feet. And a chunk of boxcar uh, took off my canopy and a chunk out of my shoulder. And it actually, not, I didn't know it at the time, but I lost two cylinders out of the engine, holes in the propeller. There was, I could see boxcar stuck in the leading edge of the wings and the tail. And uh, when I came through this explosion, I, dear old engine kept coughing and smitten and smoking and vibrating, and I landed hit this grass field just perfectly and I was all over it, trying to control the airplane and finally the wheels apparently dug into the ground and I went up on the nose into a vertical position and then fell back on the tail and I got out and you couldn't believe the damage that had been done to that airplane. The whole bottom of the airplane had been seared and all three tires had burned up in the airplane and I landed on three flat tires on the rims is what really happened.